where do you see the proper DC to AC size ratio where you're going to get the best performance out of the microinverter? Faster installation, better value, and pairs with higher capacity PV modules than competing solutions. When competitors make a microinverter uh, and we make one, their serves one PV module, ours serves two. So just by the nature of two and one, you have a better value there. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and today we're coming to you from InterSolar 2024, the International Solar Conference here in San Diego. And this afternoon I'm joined by Jason Higginson from AP Systems, and we're going to be looking at the new AP Systems DS3 microinverter. So Jason, good to meet you. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Oh, thanks for having us. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, part of the reason we're here, of course, is to cover the latest solar technology and solar products. And so, of course, one of the components that makes up a solar power system, one of the key components, is the inverter, or in this in this case, the microinverters. So can you tell us, for those that aren't that familiar with the AP Systems microinverter, what makes it so unique? Yeah, so AP Systems is one of the, uh, uh, the first uh, microinverter uh, companies in the industry. We founded the multi-module microinverter, and that's uh, what we have on display today. It's a dual-module microinverter. It's actually the most powerful dual-module microinverter in the world today. So we have three different sizes, and they handle PV modules from like 400 watts all the way up to uh, 550 watts. And the key differentiator with our DS3 is that it handles those higher capacity PV modules, and it also comes in at a better value because when competitors make a microinverter uh, and we make one, their serves one PV module, ours serves two. So just by the nature of two and one, you have a better value there. So that's what we're trying to bring to the uh, the installers. Makes sense. Okay, we see. So when you say dual module microinverter, you're saying two solar panels, two solar modules can be serviced by a single microinverter. So. What does that translate to in terms of overall system costs for the for the installer and for the end user? Sure. Well, it's a couple of factors. So one, it's a less expensive product. So when you compare it to uh, systems of similar output from competitors, it's in some cases half the price. Um, and for uh, the installation itself, that's why it's an installer's microinverter because it's a two-in-one. Naturally, it goes in faster, especially when you look at our four-in-one inverters on the three-phase commercial side. Uh, it goes in 75% faster. So installation is a big part of the soft costs that installers are facing, and uh, we're just trying to help them uh, make some more money on each job. Yeah, no, and I'm glad that you're taking that approach because, as you know, that this last year has been a very tough year for solar installers and for solar manufacturers as well. I mean, there's just been a kind of a general slowdown, but yeah. I know installers in particular are under a lot of pressure right now. Now, you touched on another another issue, which is that what I've seen over the past couple of years is that the solar panel output wattage has increased very rapidly. Yeah. The, the, the microinverter power outputs have not necessarily kept up as fast. So can you tell us, you mentioned different power classes, what, what are we looking at here as far as the yeah. DS3S, the L, and the DS3? Right, so we start here at the S. We actually, when we first produced this microinverter, we wanted to build uh, something that was really competitive but also future uh, forward-looking and, uh, and could reach those higher capacities. So we came out with our DS3 with no letter after it, uh, and it was the most powerful thing that uh, was available on the market. And um, and our customers told it it was it was too powerful. They didn't have any PV modules for residential that they could pair it with. So that's when we produced the S and the L. So the S is ideal for PV modules of about 400 watts. Uh, the L for PV modules 450 to 480, uh, and the DS3. Uh, at 880 watts output, that's 440 per channel. It's ideal for PV modules in the in the mid 500s. Uh, so, when we first it launched the product about two and a half years ago, uh, no one was really using those sizes in residential. And so now, you, mid 400s is common in residential installations, and uh, and even some in the 500s we get requests for. So we have the product that meets those needs. Excellent. And Jason, I think there's actually a little bit of a teaching opportunity here. So the, the issue that we're talking about here is, is DC to AC size size ratio, right? What what wattage, how much wattage should your DC rating be over your AC rating? I know a lot of people have different opinions on, on this topic out there, and a lot of companies about it. sell competitively. So what is your take on, and, and where, where do you see the proper DC to AC size ratio where you're going to get the best performance out of the microinverter? 
I'm really glad you asked that, and it's something that uh, that when I, I do instruction across the country, I, I touch on this. So uh, really what it comes down to is really trying to match the size of the PV module to what that output of the inverter is going to be. Uh, because PV modules and the inverters are warrantied for up to 25 years, uh, you need to make sure that you are accounting for any kind of potential degradation in the panel over time. Uh, as well as uh, the rating on the panel itself is uh, really the, uh, the STC, so that's your standard test condition rating. And uh, it's not the PTC. So if you look at um, the, um, uh, the, the rating for uh, these are on the, 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 the California CEC website, you can actually see the STC and the PTC for each panel uh, from each manufacturer. And um, uh, so you want to take into account oversizing the DC just a little bit. Most uh, installers in our industry use an AC to DC ratio of 1.2 to 1.3. Um, and so oversizing that, uh, that DC that's on the roof is gonna feed your microinverter enough uh, that it'll produce. Uh, you might have a little bit of clipping, but you're picking up more in the shoulders of the curve. So that's important for energy generation for the homeowner and over the life of the system. So. Um, so you take your output of the inverter and call this one 880 watts, it's dual channel, so it would be 440 watts per channel, and then you divide that, uh, or you multiply that by your ratio, which is, I call it 1.25, and you come out with somewhere in the mid 500s, which is the recommended panel sizing for that inverter. Makes a lot of sense, makes a lot of sense. We won't go too much into it in this video, but again, when we're talking about solar panel wattage, a lot of times the wattage that's stamped on the panel is perfect, ideal laboratory conditions. The actual real world performance of that solar panel is gonna be a little bit less. And that's what we're trying to match is what's the real world performance of the solar panel to the power output of the microinverter. So the microinverter is gonna be operating at peak, peak efficiency. Joe, you know your stuff, man. <laughs> Well, the Solar Surge audience is is, uh, is a very well researched audience when it comes to solar technology, and it, and of course, folks, that's why we're here at the conference so that we can keep you up to date with the latest products, the latest technologies. But I guess you know, Jason, if you had to summarize it, key differentiators, key selling points. If you're talking to a solar installer out there or a potential solar system owner, what are the advantages that they're going to have going with the AP System solution versus some of the maybe more better known microinverter brands? Sure, faster installation better value and pairs with higher capacity PV modules than competing solutions. Excellent. Well, folks, this has been a chat with Jason Higginson from AP Systems. Thank, Thank you for you. taking time with us, uh, Jason. Uh, folks, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos that you see here on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, and also go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have the new videos coming out from the conferences like this, it'll come up on your homepage so you can stay up to date with everything that's going on here. But that pretty much does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time with Solar Surge. And until next time, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.